Hey everybody, it is Tuesday, June 8th, 2021, and uh, I am here today to solve the New York Times crossword. Uh, but not only that, I'm going to teach how to solve the New York Times crossword or how to solve a crossword in general. And I, uh, I'm specifically talking American style crosswords. Now, um, why am I doing this? This video is for people who um, have maybe are interested in trying crosswords or maybe have tried solving crosswords in the past, uh, but find it a little bit intimidating and find it a little bit difficult to break into um, just because maybe they think they're too difficult or they just don't understand it. Um, here's the thing is I love crosswords and I think they bring a lot of joy. They bring, I know they bring a lot of joy into my life. And so I want to help them to bring more joy to more people. And so um, I am here to talk about how to solve the puzzle so that maybe, just maybe, uh, a few more people in the world might uh, start solving puzzles and might um, have joy in their lives because of them. And so that being said, I'm going to open up the puzzle here. Um, and uh, as I am going through the puzzle, uh, I'm going to talk about the clues and, and talk about how to work out the answers to the clues and things like that. Um, and to follow along, uh, you can see uh, in blue, as I move around um, the, uh, the grid here, um, the, the word or the answer that is highlighted in blue, the clue for that, the, the corresponding clue is also highlighted in blue to the left of the grid. So that is what, um, what I'm going to be uh, focused on. And that's what you can look at while we're going through this together. All right. So first of all, um, part of a combo meal. I think this is a, a pretty straightforward one, right? This is one that there's no tricks to this clue at all. Um, this is one that is probably a side, maybe. Like if you think about the different parts of a combo meal, you have a drink, you have a main dish, you have a side. I'm going to guess this is a side because generally a main you wouldn't say by itself, although it could potentially be main. But let's look at the downs and see if we can confirm that side is in, in fact the correct answer. The open window story writer. This is also a straightforward clue. We're looking for a name. We're looking for someone who is the uh, writer. I don't happen to know what this is. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it. A uh, set of six bowls in cricket. That's interesting. Um, I just only just recently started to learn about cricket, but I, I still don't know enough to know what this is referring to. A set of six bowls in cricket. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not familiar enough with cricket to know how to answer that. Cosine vis-a-vis -vis sine. Uh, wow. You've got a tough corner to open up. And you know what? That happens sometimes. You know, the thing about the crossword is to be persistent, especially at the beginning um, when you are um, not too familiar with crosswords. And e even though you do feel intimidating in, uh, or intimidated uh, at this point, you know, you've gone through a few a few clues and you've you've seen a, a bunch that you don't know um, right off the bat. At this point, like it can be very tempting to just be like, ah, I just don't know and give up. But like, I really, really encourage you to just stick with it. Um, gotten up. This could be maybe arisen. Does that fit? A-R-I-S-E-N, um, which would change side, but arisen also works. Um, so now that I know arisen and side, are both things that I think are possible entries. I'm gonna delete both just because I don't want them clouding my my thoughts here. Um, actress Russell. Now this one I just happen to know right off the bat. And that's what you wanna look around for, especially when you're starting out. If you don't know things, don't get frustrated thinking about it for too long. Jump ahead to something that you just know right off the bat. And I, I'm pretty sure this is Carrie Russell. I want to say Carrie Russell, and I think it's K-E-R-I, and that's Carrie Russell. Now that I have the I here in this four down here, that fits with what I was thinking could be uh, the answer here, which is Arisen. So now I'm going to go ahead and put Arisen back in. 
Um, so that that's how to work it, right? That's just how you go about these things is like, go to the ones that you think you know, or that you like are very, very confident very quickly. Um, and then that will help you fill in other things along the way. Um, I still am not sure about these other things though. So uh, I'm gonna move on to the next area. Stew containers. Um, so this is another just straightforward thing. Uh, stew container could be a pot. Um, but one thing that is pretty, pretty reliable and that I can be very confident about filling in is um, the fact that in crossword puzzles, as a general rule, if the clue is in plural, then the answer is a plural answer. If the clue is a singular, the answer is a singular answer. Uh, because this is stew containers, this is plural, the answer should be plural, and so the answer probably ends with an S here. So I can put an S in there and feel very confident about it. Uh, I'm gonna look at five down. Slim Shady for M&M. This would be, what, an alter ego? Does that fit? It, that does not fit, so it's not an alter ego. It would be what? Um, nickname, that doesn't fit either. Uh, no, I'm not sure what this is off the top of my head, so I'm gonna skip it. International group founded in Baghdad. Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head what this is either, but there is one thing that I can point out in this clue. We have international group GRP here is abbreviated. That is a signal to uh, experienced crossword solvers that the answer is going to be an abbreviation of some kind. All right, so the answer, this, these four letters are not going to be the full name of something. This is going to be an abbreviation of this international group. Um, so I'm gonna skip that. Funny Faye, now there we go. That's one off, that right off the bat I know. Um, and that's Tina. Um, so things to look out for here quickly, um, just when we had actress Russell and Funny Faye. Um, the rules of capitalization in crossword puzzles, um, they're not always the same in every puzzle, but uh, this is the case in the New York Times for sure, and it is the case in most cross American style crosswords, that the first word of a clue will be capitalized, and after that, it will not, unless it is a proper noun, and unless it's a name. So when we have funny Faye, uh, I can see that Faye is a capital F, so this is a proper noun, this is a name, and I'm looking for the other half of the name. And the same is for uh, actress Russell. Um, so now I have this T here for stew containers. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I say with a decent amount of confidence that this is pots, all right? You can keep stew in pots. Um, eight down, what a bloodhound follows. Uh, this is either going to be a smell or a scent, right? A bloodhound follows things with its nose. So, uh, and now that I have the S here already, um, the only possible answers, I think, are smell or scent. Uh, so now I wanna look at 15 across. Blank games, maker of Fortnite, simple fill in the blank. And I just happen to know this right off the bat, that is Epic Games. So then that uh, lets me know that this is scent. Cool. Descartes, who said cogito ergo sum. Again, anytime they give you half of the name, they're generally looking for the other half. So we have Descartes, so the other half of the name is Rene. And now I have OPE here, and so I'm pretty sure this is OPEC, uh, is this uh, abbreviated name of this group. And Slim Shady uh, is going to be a persona, I think. Right, that's another persona for Eminem. Uh, let's say, let's see, 23 across Ixnay. Um, anytime there's like a one word clue like this, uh, the answer is going to be just a simple replacement. It's going to be, what is another word that you could use in place of the word Ixnay? Um, these can be tricky sometimes because sometimes the word can be used in multiple ways, right? Ixnay, 
Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be veto, because you could say ixne in place of the word veto. So like, um, uh, let's, uh, let's ixne the trip to uh, Disneyland, right? <laughs> That's just a random example, right? Let's ixnay that, right? Let's veto that. That's that's pretty much um, uh, the same meaning. You're using it in the same way. Um, all right, cool. So now I have a decent amount of words here at 20 across. And so I'm gonna take a look at it. The reason I was waiting for a little while to look at it um, is because 20 across is a long entry, as you can see. Long entries, are generally going to be the toughest ones to fill out in the grid. And so you generally want to try and get as many uh, letters in it already as possible before even really trying to solve it because um, it's just not uh, often there's going to be like things with wordplay involved or they're going to be like trivia things or it's going to be a long phrase of some kind and generally those are just hard to figure out. Um, the other thing about the long entries in the grid is usually they are connected in some way. Um, and this is true for the New York Times crosswords from Monday to Thursday. These are what we call themed puzzles in which there is some kind of connection between some of the entries in the grid, um, usually involving wordplay of some kind, or sometimes just uh, a connection of like uh, a thematic connection, like all of the words are about something um, that could just be like different facts about something or, or something like that. Um, but uh, generally the long entries uh, in the clue, in, in the um, puzzle, are going to be connected in some way. So in, in today's case, uh, this looks to be 20 across, 34 across, 40 across, and 52 across are going to have some kind of connection uh, of some kind. And uh, let's look at the clue for it. Check out devices at Dublin supermarkets with a question mark. Now, anytime you see a question mark in the grid, feel free to skip this clue and come back to it later. And the reason I say that is because question marks in a uh, crossword clue, in a New York Times crossword clue or an American style crossword clue, is an indicator to the solver that this particular clue involves some kind of wordplay. So jumping from the clue to the answer, you're going to have to do some kind of wordplay connection in your head, which is generally hard to do. And so um, I'm not even going to actually, I, I am going to fill in a little bit because check out devices and I see scan here. And I'm going to guess that this is something scanners. I don't know what this first part is, but I'm going to guess that it ends in scanners because check out devices, right? We have a plural here, so it's going to end in an S, um, so, and that just fits. I, I can see right away that I had scan already, and then the N-E-R-S just fits. It just popped into my head. That's something that, like, if you didn't see that, don't feel bad. Don't feel intimidated by the fact that I saw it and you didn't, like, don't feel like that. This is just something that you'll get used to seeing faster with practice. And that's another thing that I want to say, um, I should have said right from the get go is like, a lot of this stuff just becomes easier with practice. So I, I'm explaining a lot of the rules of the clues and things, but recognizing them is something that you don't really get fast at without practicing. Um, so, so don't feel bad about not really getting this stuff right away. Um, just do what you can at first. And then the more you do it, the faster you'll get at it and the better you'll get at it. All right, transparent hospital container informally. This informally is another signal to the cluer uh, or to the solver that, uh, that this answer at nine across is going to be some kind of informal name of something or informal uh, or casual speak uh, for something. It could be an abbreviation or a nickname of some kind, or some shortened version of whatever this is called. A transparent hospital container. Um, 
I'm not sure what that's referring to. Maybe like the, I'm, I'm not sure what those are called, like incubators or whatever for like ba newborn babies. Uh, that could be what it's referring to. Uh, or like an IV bag, maybe. Ooh, it could be an IV bag because IV is technically a shortening of intravenous. Could be an IV bag, but I'm, I am gonna leave it. I'm not gonna fill that in quite yet. I'm gonna look at 12 down and 13 down because those are short and generally the short entries are usually easier to fill, to fill in. Signature Obama legislation in brief. Again, in brief, this is another signal that we have a shortened version of something. Uh, Obamacare is the Affordable Care Act, right? Which would be ACA. So I'm pretty sure that's what that is. A uh, spot for some reps. A spot for some reps. Um, I'm guessing this is referring to, so wordplay. Wordplay is very common using words in, that have, that could potentially have multiple meanings. And part of your job is to figure out which meaning of the word is, is this referring to. So reps could be referring to representatives here. I think this is referring to reps as in like when you're lifting weights and you do reps and sets of things. I think that's what reps this is referring to and a place where you can do some reps uh, is the gym. So I think this is gym. And this AG is now telling me that perhaps IV bag is in fact correct. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill in IV bag and then look at 11 down and see if I can confirm that nectar collectors. Uh, we have collectors with an S, so it is a plural and that confirms the S here. Uh, and then uh, I think bees are nectar collectors, right? Makes sense. Oh, this is this is fun. So this is a nice thing that the app does or when you're solving New York Times crosswords in the app or online, if you do it in a browser, it does this as well, uh, which is anytime clues reference another clue, which uh, they do do sometimes, um, uh, they will highlight the other clue that it's referencing. So at 16 across, we have together with 22 down the star of TV's claws. Um, I do not know. I have, I, I don't think I've ever even heard of the TV show claws. So I have no idea who is the star of uh, the TV show, but I do know that because six, uh, 16 across here has the actual clue and 22 down just says C16 across. That means this, the name of whoever this star is, is going to start here at 16 across. And then 22 down is probably the last name of the person, but um, I don't know who it is. So I'm gonna have to skip it and go to 19 across. A letter shaped construction piece. Um, this is going to be some kind of beam, um, an I beam or a U beam, something like that. Um, so I don't know which letter it might be referring to. Probably an I beam, but I'm going to leave this 19 across blank for now. But I can see because I have the EAM and I know construction piece is a beam of some kind. And I know that there are different letter shaped beams. Uh, I'm going to fill in the B. Now let's look at 10 down. Uh, gave a soundless alert. Uh, so this is a good time to talk about verbs in crossword clues or verbs in, um, in crosswords in general. Um, so gave a soundless alert as a phrase, this is a verb, right? It's a kind of, it's a verb plus an object, but collectively this is an action, right? Um, to give a soundless alert or gave a soundless alert. Anytime you have an action as the clue, um, the answer is going to be another verb or verb phrase that means the same thing or that could mean the same thing. Um, the thing about verbs in crosswords is the tenses will always match. The conjugation of the verb will always match the clue. In this case, we have gave. So this is past tense. So that means the answer in the grid is also going to be past tense. Um, v blank br. I don't think there could be any other verb that starts with that except vibrate. I can't think of a single other verb that begins with that, that begins with V blank BR. So um, I am 
pretty confident this is vibrated, right? The past tense of vibrate to match gave. Um, blank IEC. Wow, I have no idea who this person is. I don't, I don't know a single actor or actress. Do I? I don't think I do. Man, okay. That's unfortunate. <laughs> but hopefully at nine down, I can figure out what this is and that will fill in the blanks for me. Temporary. Hmm. Temporary, I'm not sure. Uh, off the top of my head. I don't ha and I don't have enough letters in here already to help me, uh, to get me all of, all of the way through this. So I'm gonna try and fill out more letters down here uh, and see if uh, that helps. Let's look at 24 across. Uh, figure skater Lipinski. Ooh, I think it's Tina, I wanna say. I'm not totally sure about this, but I, I'm like, 70% maybe, 60 to 70%, which is enough for me to say, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in T-I-N-A, plus T blank blank A, there's not too many names that, that like, if you're just doing Wheel of Fortune, right? We call it Wheel of Fortune in the crossword kind of solving world, which is basically, if you just ignore the clue and only look at the grid, um, and just look at the letters that you have and try and fill in the blanks with a legitimate word or a legitimate name. Um, like, so T blank blank A, how many names are there that go T blank blank A? The, the only one that comes to mind for me right now is Tina. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in. All right, 22 down. Uh, oh, that's the second half of this name, which I have no idea what the name is. So that's no help. Uh, all right. Uh, occupies as a desk. Now here we have occupies. This is an action. This is a verb. And it is conjugated in the, what, uh, third person, right? He, she occupies. Uh, so this answer is also going to be conjugated in the third person as well. Um, when you occupy a desk, you are sitting at a desk. I think this is sits at, I think. Uh, which is a good opportunity for me to point out um, in case you didn't realize already with things like IV bag and the scanners here. Um, the New York Times crosswords gives you no indication of whether the answer is just one word or two words, etc. Um, so it, it is always possible for it to be more than one word. Um, so don't... Um, you know, try not to be too focused on finding just one word for the answer. Uh, it could be more than one. Um, in, and in this case, I'm pretty sure sits at is going to be correct. Okay. Where to next? Uh, I want to move back to this side and go to 21 down. Internet address starter. I think this is uh, just a straight up clue. What starts an internet, an internet address? I think it's HTTP. Simple as that. Uh, this NTN doesn't look great, but this might be two words. Maybe the first word ends in NT and the second word begins with N. Um, so too busy at the moment in quotes, anytime you see a, a, a clue in quotes, don't be confused by that. It's, it's really not that um, difficult or not that confusing. It, it doesn't mean that much. All it really means is like, um, the answer is probably something that people say a lot, people use in conversation or, you know, or just like something that people utter more than it is actually used written um, or, or as like proper written English. Uh, too busy at the moment. Um, something now, maybe if I'm thinking right, that the, that this is two words that split between this T and N here, um, then the second word could be now, right? To match with at the moment. Um, and then what would this first word be? Uh, it's not, not now too busy at the moment. Can't I can't now it could be, I can't now. So maybe it's three words. I'm gonna put that in. I can't now. 
right? That is something that you could say that generally means the same thing as too busy at the moment. Okay. Uh, Cornell and Columbia for two. All right, we have four two. This is a signal to me that the answer is going to be a plural, right? We have two IVs. Uh, so I think it's IVs. <laughs> I, I, I let the cat out of the bag when I said we have two IVs, but I was already thinking in my head of that this, uh, this is probably IVs. Uh, and I was, um, uh, yeah, I, I was getting ahead of myself in my own head. But anyways, uh, winery container, I think is a vat. So uh, that confirms the IVs to me. Uh, footnote abbreviation. Uh, again, we have abbreviation is itself abbreviated. So this is definitely going to be an abbreviated word or phrase. Uh, in footnotes, I believe ibid is an abbreviation used. That means like it's the same source as the previous footnote, I believe is when you say ibid. Um, so I'm gonna put that in. Let's check with 26 down. Monthly cost for many. Uh, so what do people pay for monthly often? Cable. There we go. Cool. Uh, let's look at, so 40 across is going to be, this is another long one. This is probably a themed one and it is uh, with a question mark. So this is probably some wordplay of some kind. Claim that a language in the Lord of the Rings is not extinct. Uh, just a language in the Lord of the Rings and I see E-L at the beginning. This makes me think of elf, elf or elf, elvish or elfish. I'm not sure. I've never read the Lord of the Rings. I've seen the movies, but I'm not that, I'm not like a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I like the movies enough, but like, I'm not a fanatic. Um, so I'm not really sure if this is like elvish, elven, elfit. I don't really know. I'm gonna leave that blank for the moment. 46 across, stew, steam, or boil. Um, hmm. Stew, steam, or boil. Ah, um, so something I can point out in this clue is we have or. Um, we have a list of three things that are connected with or. Um, so that means uh, this answer is going to be a singular answer. It's not going to be plural. If that or was changed to an and, uh, and that would that would include all three, and then it would have to be a plural answer. Um, so all of these things, I know it's a bit overwhelming at first, um, but you do, they are signals that you can, you should be paying attention to. Um, I know, I know it's a lot to think about. Um, but again, the more you see these clues and the more you practice, the faster you will recognize these things without even really thinking about it. Um, stew, steam, or boil, uh, like what would that be? A setting? I'm not sure. It's like cooking instructions, stew, steam, or boil. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Let me look at three down again. Cosine vis-a-vis -vis sine. Uh, Uh, I think this is derivative. I think this is derivative. Cosine is a derivative of sine. Uh, th this is me like halfway look playing Wheel of Fortune. Also thinking about the fact that like I have a, a guess that this letter right here in this yellow square is going to be either an F or a V. That's my guess. And so I'm keeping that in mind. Uh, so if I put a V there, uh, I'm just like wheel of fortuning out some math words. And I think this is derivative. All right. Let's see. Um, so what could this be? Check out devices at Dublin supermarkets. Oh, this is a typo. I did a typo. That happens sometimes. This is derivative. This is Irish scanners which it's gotta be Irish scanners. I, I don't get the reference. I don't get what this is referring to, but again, wheel of fortuning, uh, it's gotta be, we, the checkout devices part we have with scanners. So this first part, 
with ISH has got to be the Dublin part, something that's referring to, to Dublin supermarkets. Um, and so it's got to be Irish, but I have no idea what this is, what this means, Irish scanners. Uh, but I'm just going to skip it and move on. Uh, the open window story writer. Yeah, I still don't know who this is. Uh, part of a combo meal. Part of a combo meal. Oh, a soda. Boy, I don't know why that was so hard. I still don't know who this is. Who is that referring to? Uh, set of six bowls in cricket. Is this what is called an over maybe? It's gotta be. Just, and this is just, again, wheel of fortuneing. Just O blank ER, it's gotta be over. Uh, 14 across, claim confidently. Uh, this will be a ver. So Saki, I guess, is the open story, the, the open window story writer. I have no idea who that is, but, uh, you know, that's the thing with crosswords is hopefully, and especially early in the week on Monday and Tuesday puzzles, they're generally going to be the easier puzzles in the week. So, um, they try and make them so that like, uh, if one, if like the across entry is a little bit more difficult then the the ones that cross it going down will be less obscure to figure them out. Um, and I think that's what they've done here. I think Saki, they've made uh, a bit obscure and a bit difficult, but they've made sure to make the crossings a little bit easier uh, to figure out. Okay, anyways, uh, let's keep going. 34 across urban area around a church district with a question mark. This is another wordplay one. Um, this might be parish something. Again, just looking at the different parts of this clue and trying to figure out, okay, what can I replace a church district with? A church district is a parish. Um, and I, I see the PA already. I'm going to put parish in. And then this next part is going to be something about an urban area but that I don't have enough letters to guess on, so I'm gonna leave it and let's go to 27 down. Like many unofficial agreements, uh, a lot of unofficial agreements are oral agreements, right? Um, anytime you have a clue uh, with that starts with like, that means the answer is going to be an adjective, right? Oral is an adjective to describe unofficial agreements. Um, okay. 28 down, websites that allow collaborative edit, editing. This is a thing, and it is websites with an S, so this is ends in an S, and this is going to be wikis. Uh, 38 across, lead in to an alias. That will be AKA. Lead in is going to be something that comes before an alias, and AKA often comes before an alias, such as, for example, Eminem, AKA Slim Shady. All right, 35 down. It might be represented by a floppy disk icon. Uh, this it would be save. Yeah. And now I am quite certain that Parish is definitely correct. Nish. I wonder if this is Nash. Because Nash seems more like a name. I wonder if this is not... Tina. Oh, is it Tara? That is another name. Because this I was just doing Wheel of Fortune. Maybe it's Tara. Because that is a name that could fill in. Nash seems more likely for a name here. I'm going to go ahead and go with that. Um, do I have any idea what this could be yet? Temporary? Uh... really don't. Oh man. This is unfortunate. Uh, I can't, it's not coming to mind right now. I'm gonna go ahead and skip it. And hopefully I can figure that out later. Sorry not sorry singer Lovato. Again, we have half a name. We're looking for the other half. This is Demi Lovato. I think, right, Demi? Yeah, that sounds right. Full metal jacket with a question mark. So this is uh, wordplay. 
a full metal jacket is maybe armor. Yeah, works hard. Um, maybe toils, right? Uh, this is uh, another one of the clues. Like, look at the conjugation of work. It's not work hard, it's works hard. So it's going to be the same conjugation, same similar with uh, occupies and sits at. Um, I think it's going to be toils. Let's check 45 across and see if we can confirm that. Button on a remote, uh, abbreviated. Oh boy. Uh, maybe volume, volume button. Could be. Uh, let's see, 30 down, QB with the most touchdown passes in a single Super Bowl, and that is six. Unfortunately, I really do not like football and do not know hardly anything about football, let alone players' names. Uh, shoot. Yeah, that's... Uh, Steven, maybe? Or Steve? Could be. Could be Steve. And this would be Parish Metro, maybe. Like for an urban area. Yeah, let's go with that. Metro makes sense for an urban area. I don't get what is happening here. Parish Metro. Irish Scanners. Oh. Oh, I know I do see what's happening. Okay, so we have uh, an extra H inserted in the middle of a, a regular two word phrase. Iris scanner is an eye scan, right? An iris scanner. And then Paris Metro is the name of the uh, subway system in Paris, right? So Paris Metro. Okay, so uh, I'm going to guess this is Elvish lives, right? Elvis lives, Elvish lives. Ah, all right. So um, the reason I was able to guess that again is like I said, uh, on a Tuesday puzzle, there's going to be some theme in the puzzle. And usually it is something that is uh, connecting or similar between the long entries uh, of the puzzle. And so 52 across is likely going to have something similar to that as well. There's going to be an H in, a, in here, and maybe even like an ISH to match the other three, right? Um, a suggestion to friends on when to meet for lunch. Uh, yeah, it's not coming to me right off the top of my head, so we'll have to get some letters to figure that out. Okay, bubbly mixers are going to be seltzers. Again, a plural to match the plural clue, uh, stew, steam, or boil. Oh, maybe this is seethe. Yeah, okay, so this is, uh, this was a, a, a tricky one. Stew, steam, or boil, it looks like a cooking thing, but this is actually different um, verbs to describe like when you're really angry about something and you're, you're seething. You're, you're boiling with anger, or you're steaming with anger, or you're stewing with anger. Uh, that was a tricky one. Man. Uh, cut down is... Uh, so cut... This is, this is how crossword constructors can kind of uh, mess with you a little bit and, and um, you know, uh, try and throw you for a loop. Cut is one of those words, uh, one of those verbs that has multiple um, conjugations written the same way. Like if it's a past tense or past participle, it doesn't change, it's cut, cut, cut. Uh, I think this is the past participle, I think is what it's called, of hue, which is hewn. So uh, for cut down. I think that's what this is referring to. Okay, uh, 41 down, doo-wop group with six songs on the Grease soundtrack. I have no idea. Just gonna skip it, because I do not know. Uh, hemmed and hawed. Uh, I don't know, but this is two verbs that are in past tense. 
So I'm guessing this is going to be ED at the end as well. 49 across, pedal. Pedal is like to sell something, isn't it? Maybe I'm wrong here with Hyun, because this could be sell, or maybe it's something else. Hmm. I'm gonna skip it, because I'm not sure. Okay, let's look at over here. 43 down, alter ego for Homer's son on The Simpsons. Uh, this is just a straight up trivia question. El Barto uh, is Bart Simpson's alter ego. Uh, shock is maybe stun. Again, just a synonym for shock. The same way that we had, right, ixnay for veto. Stun, if it's a one word clue, it's just you're just looking for a synonym here. Uh, Marina Marker is going to be a buoy. Common golf course grass. Ooh, interesting. I do not know what this is. I'm guessing it's a type of grass that is used on golf courses, but I don't know what type of grass this is. Um, Steve. Let's see, QB. Is there a QB named Steve Young? I feel like there is, but I'm not nearly confident enough in my knowledge of football to actually put that in. So I'm gonna leave that blank until I get a few more letters to confirm what that is. Look attractive on, um, maybe suit? Like, oh, that suits you, it looks attractive on you. I think suit. Uh, Quechua speaker of old. I've never heard of Quechua or, yeah. Um, it could be like, um, it looks like uh, some kind of like Latin American language name, um, like Mayan or Incan maybe. If this is young, just again, doing Wheel of Fortune kind of stuff here. If this is young, uh, this could be Inca. I'm gonna leave it in and look at other entries and see if that, if they work and can confirm that I am correct. Uh, I like what you did there, in quotes. So it's something you could say to mean, I like what you did there. You could say, nice. Nice. Greek H's are, oh man. The Greek alphabet is something that comes up in crosswords a little more than I would prefer um, because it's really generally irrelevant, <laughs> but it, does provide uh, a lot of nice short entries with useful letter combinations. And so it comes up in crosswords. Um, I don't know what the H of the Greek alphabet is. Doing some Wheel of Fortune here, I'm gonna guess it's Ada's, right? Because it's plural. So Ada is the letter with an S. A long time would be ages. And I have no idea what this grass type is. Huh. Okay. Suggestion to friends on when to meet lunch. Oh. <laughs> Tennis, anyone. That's great. So I, I hope Zoysia is correct. I have no idea. I've never heard of that. But tennis anyone certainly makes sense because we have tennis anyone with this, an extra H in the middle. Nice. Uh, I mean, it's silly, but it makes me smile. And that's what I'm talking about. I would just want to like these little, it's just a little bit of joy to brighten your day a little bit. And it's dumb. It's silly. I know it's dumb and silly, but like, it's, it's just delightful <laughs> at the same time. Uh, an old Iranian leader is going to be, uh, what is that? Is that a Shah? I don't know. Actually, uh, my history is terrible, um, especially of history outside the USA. So um, I'm gonna leave that blank. Footlong, maybe, hmm. Put long maybe, interesting. I don't know what this is referring to either. 
Um, the maybe in the clue just means like this word is not always used to mean this. Um, it can be used to mean other things. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Fif let's look at uh, 59 across. One named singer with the 1988 Best Actress Oscar. That's gotta be Cher. It's gotta be. Uh, Nintendo's Mario. I play enough games to, to be able to guess that this is going to be Mario Kart. And uh, Amscray is probably Shoe, right? It's something in quotes. Again, this clue is in quotes, so it's gonna be something that you say to mean the same thing. And that's gotta be Shoe. Uh, footlong is a hero. Ah, uh, yes, so hero can mean multiple things, but it can mean a footlong, like a hero sandwich or a hero sub. Uh, and it was in fact Shaw, I was correct. Okay, uh, 50 down. Thrills, thrills. Thrills. I'm just gonna play Wheel of Fortune for a second. Look at my keyboard. Uh, what letter could fill this blank to mean thrills? Picks, no, licks, no, kicks. Ah, it could be kicks. Like I get my kicks on Route 66. I get my thrills. Yeah, it's gotta be kicks. Okay. Pedal. Hmm. Doo-wop song. A uh, doo-wop group with six songs on the Greek, Greece soundtrack. Shoot. Hemmed and hawed. Is this dithered? Ah. I'm not totally confident on the meaning of dithered. I wonder if this is hawk? Like you hawk something? No, because I feel like hawk is spelled differently. Pedal. I'm gonna leave that blank until I get some more letters down here and maybe that will help me. Uh, okay, 52 down, go bad is turn. Um, 57, Precision Crafted Performance Sloganeer. I have no idea what that is. I've never heard that slogan before. Uh, 57 down, Raiders of the Lost Ark Snake. Uh, is that going to be an asp? I think it's an asp. Uh, bad Place for a Mole, for short. Bad Place for a Mole. For short, so it's going to be an abbreviated answer. I'm not sure. Uh, I wonder if this is referring to a mole, not as like a mole on your skin, but a mole like a spy. So it could be like the FBI or CIA or something, but I don't know. Let's look at 61 across. Tempter of Odysseus, that I know is a siren. And bear with black eye patches, bear in quotes. Oh, this is Panda. This is just me wheel of fortuning this. Um, I can see P blank, ND blank. It's gotta be Panda. And that explains why bears in quotation marks because we they're called Panda bears often, but they are not actually bears. Okay, 58 down. I think this is CIA. Bad place for a mole, CIA. Oh, and this is Acura. That must be the slogan for Acura. Precision Crafter Performance. Okay. I think this is Shana Na. I think this is Hawk. I always thought it was spelled different. I thought it was like H-O-C-K for Hawk. Like hawking your goods. But maybe I was wrong. Okay, anyways. Uh, the crosses make sense. Dithered makes sense. Shana Na makes sense. Hune makes sense. So yeah, I'm gonna assume that Hawk is correct. Now it's just a matter of figuring out this last bit. Temporary, is this interim? Is this a T-beam? Yes, it is, interim. All right, and that is how you solve a New York Times crossword. Um, a lot of the times it comes down to that wheel of fortuning, just looking, ignoring the clue and just, or, you know, maybe not completely ignoring the clue, but like keeping it in mind a little bit and just looking at the grid and thinking how many words could, could match these letters, this letter combination that I had. So that's, um, 
just uh, my my main advice to new solvers is really just like skip skip around the clues until you see something that you know for sure. Like uh, if you know Descartes' first name is Rene, go for it. Just fill that in first. If you know Epic Games as the maker of Fortnite, go to that and fill that in first and then let those letters help you figure out the other things around it. Um, and especially when you're starting out, if you need to give up and look up answers, you know, I, I really think there's no shame in that. I, I am a, a firm believer that there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of if, if you have to look things up uh, for a crossword. Like, if you can do it without looking things up, that feels great, it does. But like, I, I never really get that down on myself if I have to look things up when I'm solving a crossword. Because really the joy to me is seeing the wordplay and seeing and learning new things from crosswords and seeing what crossword constructors are able to come up with in interesting ways to clue things and interesting way to put words together. Like this with Irish scanners, Parish Metro, uh, Elvish lives and tennis anyone. It's so silly, but it's fun. I love it. Uh, and I'm really glad to see it as, as the theme for today. Uh, I really liked this puzzle. I thought this was great. Um, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, um, further questions about how to solve a crossword, uh, please do let me know. I'd be happy to um, cover questions in a future video or answer your questions just in the comments below, um, depending on you know how, how involved of an answer your question needs. Um, please do feel free below. Uh, to, to comment on this video with any questions or comments like that. Um, and uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, I normally don't go quite this in detail in my explaining of how to solve things. I do this kind of a video only about once a month, um, but it is, um, it is a fun time. We have a fun time on this channel with puzzles. Uh, they really are delightful. They bring me a lot of joy and I have been really enjoying especially doing the live streams together with viewers and I'm looking to do more of those in the future. So if you want to be a part of that, please subscribe to the channel and uh, that is it for today. I will be back with my usual solve tomorrow uh, of the Wednesday puzzle. So I hope to see you then. All right. Thanks so much, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.